In this video, I will explain how to use the simplex method to solve a linear programming problem. So let's check out this problem. It says maximize p equals 30x plus 40y subject to the following constraints. So we're trying to figure out what values of x and y would maximize p, assuming that x and y have to meet these constraints. So to solve this using the simplex method, the very first step is we're going to rewrite these inequalities using equal signs, and we're going to introduce slack variables. So for this particular example, there are three constraints in this last condition down here where it says x is greater than zero and y must be greater than zero. This is known as non-negativity. So because we have three constraints that we need to consider, we need to introduce three slack variables. So here's how we do that. We rewrite the equations as 2x plus y, and we'll introduce our first slack variable, let's call that s1, or slack1, and we'll set that equal to 10. Then we'll rewrite the next equation, so x plus y. Now we'll introduce a new slack variable, let's call it s2, is equal to 7. And then we'll write the last equation, x plus 2y, and we'll introduce one more slack variable called s3, is equal to 12. And then lastly, we need to rewrite the objective function up here, in which all of the variables are on one side. So let's subtract the 30x and subtract the 40y. So here's what that would look like. We would have negative 30x minus 40y plus p would be equal to zero. So now that we've rewritten each of these equations, we're now going to place the coefficients of each equation into a tableau. So here's what that looks like. Okay, so we've created our tableau where we've written the variable names along the top here. And within the tableau, we've written the coefficients from the equations. Now, the next step is we need to focus our attention on the bottom row right here. And we need to ask ourselves, what is the most negative value in this bottom row? So that would be the negative 40 right here. So what that means is that this column that the negative 40 belongs to is going to be our pivot column. Now, what we want to do is identify the pivot element that we're going to focus on in this column. So to do that, we now need to look at the values on this right-hand side and divide them by the corresponding value in our pivot column. So for example, 10 divided by one, that's 10. Then seven divided by one is seven. And lastly, 12 divided by two is six. So among these values, which one is the smallest? Well, that would be the six right here. So what that means is that the corresponding value in our pivot column, which would be this two value right here, this two is now our pivot element. So what we want to do is we want to make this two, our pivot element, we want to make it a one and we want to make every other value in our pivot column equal to zero. So how could we make this two equal to a one? Well, we could just divide it by two. So two divided by two is one. And whatever we do to this pivot element, we need to do to every value in its row. So in other words, we need to divide every value in this row by two. So here's what that looks like. All right, so I've rewritten the values of every row except for this third row right here in the tableau. And remember, we said we're going to divide each of these values by two. So I've gone ahead and written row three, we're going to divide by two. So for example, this one right here, we need to divide by two. So that will become a one half. Then the two, we divide that by two. So that becomes a one. Then we divide zero by two. So that's a zero. Divide this zero by two. That's a zero. One divided by two is one half. Zero divided by two is zero. And 12 divided by two is six. So this is our updated tableau. So remember we said that we want to make our pivot element a one, which we've already done, but we want to make every other value in the column, so this value, this value, and this value, we want to make them all zeros. So here's how we could do that. Notice that if we take this value in row one and we simply subtract this value in row three, that would produce a zero right here, which is what we want. So let's go ahead and say row one, those values are going to become row one minus row three. Then if we consider this row two right here, again, we could do the same thing where let's take this value and let's subtract row three. So we can say row two is going to become row two minus row three. And then lastly, how can we make this negative 40 equal to zero? Well, we could multiply row three by 40. So that would be one times 40, which is 40. And then we could add this negative 40, which would produce a zero. So we'll say for row four, we're going to do 40 times row three, and then we're going to add row four. So when we do that, let's see what we get. Okay, so for row one, we said we're going to do row one minus row three. So that would be two minus one half, that's three halves. 
Then we have 1 minus 1, which is 0. Then we have 1 minus 0, which is 1. Then we have 0 minus 0, which is 0. Then we have 0 minus 1 half, which is negative 1 half. Then we have 0 minus 0, which is 0. And then we have 10 minus 6, which is 4. All right, now moving on to row 2, we said we're going to do row 2 minus row 3. So 1 minus 1 half, that's 1 half. Then we have 1 minus 1, which is 0. Then 0 minus 0, which is 0. 1 minus 0, that's 1. 0 minus 1 half, that's negative 1 half. 0 minus 0 is 0. And lastly, 7 minus 6 is 1. And then we have row 4, we're going to do 40 times row 3 plus row 4. So if we do 40 times 1 half, that's 20, plus negative 30 is negative 10. Then we have 40 times 1, which is 40, plus negative 40 is 0. Then we have 40 times 0 plus 0, that's 0. Another 40 times 0 plus 0, that's 0. 40 times 1 half is 20, plus 0 is 20. And 40 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. And 40 times 6 is 240, plus 0 is still 240. All right, so notice that we were able to make our pivot element equal to 1 and every other value in the column equal to 0. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this tableau to make a little more space. Okay, so I've went ahead and rewritten that tableau. Now what we need to do is we need to look at the bottom row again and say, are there any remaining negative values? Because if there are, we need to repeat that process that we just did. So we can see there is a remaining negative value of negative 10. So this is going to be our new pivot column. Now to determine the pivot element in this column, remember what we do. We take the value on this right hand side and we divide them by the corresponding value in the pivot column. So four divided by three halves, Remember, when we divide a fraction, that's the same as 4 times the reciprocal of that fraction. So 4 times 2 thirds, that's 8 thirds. Then we have 1 divided by 1 half, that's the same as 1 times 2 over 1, which is 2. And 6 divided by 1 half, that's the same as 6 times 2 over 1, which is 12. So the smallest of these values is the 2 right here. So that means that this 1 half within our pivot column, this 1 half is going to become our pivot element. So this is the value that we want to make 1, and every other value in the column we want to make a 0. So we can see that to make this a 1, we would just need to multiply it by 2. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's write row 2. The values in row 2 are simply going to become row 2 times 2. So here's what that looks like. Okay, so none of the other rows are changing right now, but row 2 we're going to do row 2 times 2. So 1 half times 2, that's 1. 0 times 2 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0, 1 times 2 is 2, negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1, 0 times 2 is 0, and 1 times 2 is 2. Okay, so we can see that we made our pivot element equal to 1. Now we just need to make all of the other values in the column equal to 0. So how could we do that? Well, if we focus on this first row, we could make this value a 0 by taking row 1 and subtracting 3 halves times row 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. So we can say row 1 is going to become row 1 minus 3 halves times row 2. Then if we want to make this value a 1, how could we do that? Well, we could do this row 3 value minus 1 half times row 2. So let's write that. Row 3 is going to be row 3 minus 1 half times row 2. And then lastly, to make this negative 10 a 0, we could do 10 times row 2 plus row 4. So let's write the new row 4 is going to be 10 times row 2 plus row 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out what these values are. So the values in the second row are not going to change, so I'm just going to rewrite those right here. Okay, so for row 1, we said we'll do row 1 minus 3 halves times row 2. So 3 halves minus 3 halves times 1 is a 0. 0 minus 3 halves times 0 is 0. 1 minus 3 halves times 0 is 1. Then we have 0 minus 3 halves times 2. So 3 halves times 2 is 3. So we have 0 minus 3, that's negative 3. Then we have negative 1 half minus 1 times negative 3 halves. So that's negative 1 half plus 3 halves, which is just a positive 1. 
And then we have 0 minus 3 halves times 0, that's a 0. And 4 minus 3 halves times 2. So again, 3 halves times 2 is 3, so really we have 4 minus 3, which is 1. So we'll put a 1 right here. Now moving on to row 3, we have row 3 minus 1 half times row 2. So 1 half minus 1 half times 1 is 0. Then we have 1 minus 1 half times 0 is just 1 still. Then 0 minus 1 half times 0 is 0. 0 minus 1 half of 2, so 0 minus 1, that's negative 1. Then we have 1 half minus 1 half times 1, so that's 1 half plus 1 half, which is 1. Then 0 minus 1 half times 0, that's 0. And 6 minus 1 half of 2, so 1 half of 2 is 1, so we have 6 minus 1, that's 5. And then lastly, in row 4, we said we'll do 10 times row 2 plus row 4. So we have 10 times 1 plus a negative 10, that's a 0. Then we have 10 times 0 plus 0, that's a 0. 10 times 0 plus 0, that's another 0. 10 times 2, that's 20, plus 0, that's still 20. Then we have 10 times negative 1, that's negative 10, plus 20, that's a positive 10. And then we have 10 times 0, that's 0, plus 1, it's just 1. And then we have 10 times 2, that's 20, plus 240, that's 260. So now if we look at our tableau, we'll notice that there are no negative values in the bottom row anymore, so that means we're done. So if we look at our variables, we have a total of six variables up here. We say that the basic variables are the ones that have a one in one of the rows and a zero in every other row. So we can see that variable x, y, slack variable one, and p all have a one in one of the rows of their column and a zero everywhere else. So these are our basic variables. And we can see what their values are just by looking at their corresponding value in the right-hand column. So for example, slack variable one has a one right here in its column, and the corresponding value in the right-hand column is a one. So slack variable one is equal to one. Then if we look at variable x, we can see that it has a one right here in this row, and the corresponding value in the right-hand column is a two. So x is equal to 2. Then we can see that variable y has a 1 right here in its column, and its corresponding value on the right-hand side is a 5, so y is equal to 5. And lastly, variable p has a 1 right here, so its corresponding value in the right-hand column is 260. So p is equal to 260. Now, the other variables that don't meet that condition of having a 1 in just one of the rows, those are known as non-basic variables, which we can see are slack variable 2, and slack variable three. And we simply set both of those variables equal to zero. So now if we recall what we were trying to do in the first place, we were trying to maximize this function of p equals 30x plus 40y. So it turns out that this is maximized when x is equal to two and y is equal to five. And when x is two and when y is five, if you plug in a two right here and a five right here, p turns out to be 260. So that is our final answer. This objective function is maximized when x is equal to 2 and when y is equal to 5. And when that's the case, p is equal to 260.